name is Reborn Isaac Barry from Mary Science Lab. And today, we will be covering Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, better known as Bungabund. Now, keep in mind that this is only the first installment. We, we are only going to talk about the years of his early life, from 1920 to 1942. There will also be later installments where we will talk about his later life, such as how he rose to power, joined the Muslim League, formed uh, the other leagues such as the Awami League, and uh, served jail time, and eventually led Bangladesh as an independent country. So now, who wants to start our conversation? I think Rifat wants to do that. Hmm. Okay, so I understand that Bongobondo was born in a rural village, yes. and uh, he went from becoming a a poor rural village uh, child to the founding father of an entire nation. So rags to riches, you're saying? And he was, also, yeah, yeah. he was also a great contemporary of other two founding father of other two nations, Pakistan. Including Pakistan Jinnah and India. And the yeah. great, great, great Mahatma Gandhi of, of India, the founding father. So can India. you compare and contrast their uh, that their would be, beginnings? That would, be, uh, that would be good. Jinnah, Gandhi and Bangabandhu? Yeah. yeah, compare and contrast. You know, not now probably. You Probably you want to start with his yeah. early life. Yeah. yeah, and also I can't really say much myself about the beginnings of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. But anyway, uh, he as in he was born in on March seventeenth, nineteen twenty, as part of oh, the Oh, March seventeen, you said? Yeah, yes. Wow. Just, 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 just the day before the his before, birthday. Yeah, you know, the there was this truly. I went to uh, the Holy Christian Hospital and asked them, "Why don't mm-hmm. you guys?" Rifat was born like 11, uh, 12, 12 or 3, like after midnight, a mm-hmm. little bit after midnight. I told them, <laughs> why don't you kind of uh, change it March 18 so that you would be kind of boarding on the same day of Bangabundu, but they said no. Anyway. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, that's a very heartbreaking story. But well, anyway, now let's get back to what we were talking about. So... Uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, he, he wasn't called uh, Bongabondu in those days, or even Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. He, he was commonly known as Sheikh Mujib, or even just mm. Mujib. Mm. So, in his early life, he was um, sent to elementary school at the age of nine. He was born into in, the Sheikh family by um, Sai. I believe Sayera Khatun, who was her, her mut- his mother, and Sayera Khatun was actually the matriarch of this long-standing family that had existed since about the 1500s, mm-hmm. and Sheikh Lutfar Rahman. Sheikh was just a family title, so we can just call him Lutfar Rahman, who was a record-keeping officer in court. Where did they get the Sheikh from? Um, I mean, as I said, uh, it's the Sheikh family. So, uh, it was an entire long-standing family so instead of, of the people. last name, instead of the last name, they had the first name, right? Yeah, essentially. Mm. Oh, I see. So, yeah, okay. So, anyway, now, they born Sheikh Mujibur Rama. What is that name rooted to, Sheikh? Is it rooted <laughs> to Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, or somewhere else? I believe it's rooted somewhere in the Indian subcontinent. So, anyway, uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman actually has a few meanings. It can basically mean a leader, somebody who's... uh, And Sheikh or Lutfar Rahman probably named him this because he saw in the little baby's eyes that they would change Bengal. Mm. I mean, they did, so that name checks out. So anyway, uh, in 1929, he went to elementary school and uh, he got through it very quickly. He persevered a lot and, in fact, he was very talkative. So talkative that the teacher actually told him to quiet down a few times, <laughs> even when he was by himself. Um, mm. So he was, he was literally at a least. Yeah, so he was a very good speaker. He was very brave. And, I mean, not much is known about his elementary school life, but what we do know is, is shows there, his is early time leadership. Is there anything about leadership. his headmaster or at elementary school? Or? Uh, no. I think that's high school, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Mm. There is no such thing as middle school, I guess. I, I don't think there, there is middle school in Bangladesh. Yeah, probably. Not at that time. 
Uh, no, but they have secondary school in mm. Britain now. So yeah, so secondary school is like considered as high school. S- yeah. Okay. So, uh, back to where we were at again. Sorry. So, um, anyway, now in two years he would be transported to high school. Now, an important thing happened in high school where he graduated in 1931. Well, he graduated into high school in 1931. Now, a very important thing happened there. What exactly happened was this was his first sign of leadership. Is so a, his a led a protest in order to change the principal of his high school or tell the principal of his high school to actually do something. Because according to Bunga uh <coughs> the principal of the high school was very inept. They were doing absolutely nothing about uh, the stuff that was happening inside the school. Um, While the principal... Just, just us? So, uh, it doesn't actually list some events that he... Uh, it doesn't actually list any events, but uh, we can presume that that's what <coughs> Bongo Bundu wanted the principal out for, because that's what he said. So... Well, so he challenged the principal of the school? Uh, well, principal, uh, headmaster, headmaster. Same thing, okay. anyway. Who gave him that authority? Well, Himself! He was, he was maverick. Mm. Yeah. He was extremely brave. So, anyway, the headmaster was actually called by his superintendent, and uh, he was basically fired for what he had, uh, because he didn't do anything. So, But in between that, you should mention that Bongo Bondu inspired a lot of protests from the That's true. community. Otherwise, the head, the, the headmaster would have still been in place. Yes, right. yeah. the, the yes. Because so if one is student yeah. protest, that doesn't make a difference. That, 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 I mean, yeah, know. that was the most important thing. It the ability to convince people. What led to the what led to the firing of the super, uh, the headmaster? Um, uh, basically, there were a large protest on school grounds uh, uh, in a few weeks after that whole confrontation. And so, uh, th- this large protest th- uh, basically shook the school, and um, the headmaster was actually condemned by the superintendent and fired so because the, the superintendent what is, what is the, had heard. What is, the, what is the name of the headmaster? Uh, well, I don't really know. I could probably do some deeper digging and okay. find it out, but it's not really that important anyway, okay. because he was a minor character in Bongo Bondu's life. Okay, I see, I see, I see. All right. So, yeah, so Bongo Bondu wanted to kind of, um, kind of, uh, not letting him, not allowing him to do bad things, right? No. Uh, even at least. Uh, no. He was a very brave man. He was a strong speaker, as I've said before. And his mother said that even while he was a child. Oh, he, he had more influence, uh, you know, his mother had more influence over him or his father? Uh, well, I don't really know much about his familiar life or his life at home, but b- both of them were very supportive of him, from what I remember. Oh, okay, all right, okay. So usually the, the parents really don't allow their children uh, do politics. So why did the, the, his parents allow him to kind of uh, protest uh, against the um, uh, unjust, uh, to do the politics, to uh, why? I mean, it was justice. Well, so actually I can his mom didn't uh, told him not to go to the protest, right? Well, uh, <coughs> I can't say that for sure, but I believe so. Yeah, his, his mom said, uh, uh, Bongo Bundu, don't go to the protest uh, because they will arrest you. So, yeah, he was only, I think, 22 at that time. Yeah, in 1942, uh, he actually got his matriculation exam done. He passed it, and uh, then he was out to in the real world. And immediately, he joined the Muslim League because he didn't like what the British were doing to um, <coughs> the British India, and especially uh, the province of Bengal. So he actually joined the Muslim League, or the All India Muslim League which sought to create a new state if India ever got its independence called Pakistan that would be in the uh, that would have jurisdiction over the region where the Muslims were the so largest that means minority. The Bongo, Bondo, Bongo Bondo was kind of supporting the supporting the Pakistan rather than like is staying with India, right? Uh yeah. Okay. So Wait, Bongo Bondo was supporting Pakistan? 
uh, we'll get to that. So, anyway, mm. uh, we'll get to that in the second installment. No, Basically, I mean, what I mean that the, a Muslim League betrayed him after it created Pakistan. Well, initially, Bangabandhu supported Muslim League, who's because who it, fighting for... Yeah, independent from uh, the British, because it looked like they were going to set free uh, Bangla uh, Bangladesh or Bengal and bring a new democratic era there. But after mm. a dictator took over, which we'll cover in the next installment this series... Uh, that was proven very false, and mm. Bangabandhu started to turn against the Muslim League. Oh, I see. Okay. Initially, he was a supporter, but then he kind of walked away, right? Yeah. So, anyway, he joined the Muslim League in 1942 and ca uh, got caught up in his first protest against the British, which saw him arrested and having four months of jail oh. time. Oh my god, he, 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 he jailed at uh, the age of what, 22? 22, yeah. Wow. Mm. The, the, the and he was, uh, he was actually a elected. He was still a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, um, boy. Yeah, 22 is a very young age, I especially mean. to be out in the real world and to be immediately arrested. Why was he arrested? Uh, protesting. Protesting against oh, what? Uh, the British rule. British who arrested him? Um, the <coughs> police, obviously, or the military. And what was his fault? Just protesting? Protesting, yeah. Protesting is British, okay. Uh, as a as a as a as a student leader, right? Mhm. Mm okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, protesting against the British was obviously not taken kindly by the British. Why not? The British was like you know they wanted to have their control over, and they wanted to they didn't want to leave India. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was India. Mm, yeah, they oh they were forced to leave India basically. Oh, this is nineteen twenty two, so it's right. twenty five years before the partition. N not nineteen twenty. Are we talking nineteen forty two? Oh, sorry, oh, yeah, it's five yeah. years before the partition. Yeah, at the peak of yeah. the World War II. So oh, that's so that explains why yeah. they were. So and Japan was doing some questionable things mm. on nations bordering right next to British India. Really? Yeah. Because Japan was like. Uh, yeah, World and War Japan I was desiring oh, territory. World War two. Yeah, That's and the, Japan yeah. was actually desiring some territories of British India, including this. Really? Yeah, including this one island already owned by the Axis that was supposed to be in British India. They invaded it. Uh, well, it was what a very small. What's the island. name of the island? I forget. Oh. But it was, I believe, the stationing of the all, and uh, I believe Three it was island. the Free India. The so Japan was poking India, poking the British India. Yeah, mm. it was right on the, uh, their doorstep. All right, so and let's end the first mm -hmm. installment. Tomorrow we're going to have the second installment. What are you going to be talking about tomorrow? We're going to be talking about his life from 1942 until he got into politics. He started to get uh, enraged at what the Muslim League was doing mm. and things like that. And then after that, we'll his obviously continue. No, his assassination was at the end of his life. Yeah, yeah. 1975. That's like end. If you want to join this research, this is a research person. We're not claiming yeah. that we are uh, two hundred percent expert on Bangabandhu. No. Or he is two hundred percent expert in Bangabandhu, or Raf is two hundred percent expert in Bangabandhu. What we are saying that this is uh, this is an opportunity for us to learn from you. And this is if an you know, opportunity for you to learn from us as yeah, well. That's right. So if you know anything about his childhood, especially. The, the headmaster of his primary school, the headmaster of his secondary school, why why he had to why he had to graduate uh, from uh, uh, why he had to graduate matriculation at 22. I believe he was kind of he was very uh, very sick at the very early age. Yeah, I believe he actually had something happen to his eye. Oh, what, so what age do people usually matriculate? Matriculate about 18. Oh, 18 oh. Or he was four years behind. Yeah, so he was very sick. Very yeah, he sick. was four years behind yeah. because he had to delay his <laughs> education in middle school because something happened to his eye. But so there was so he no had middle to get school. surgery. There was no, no uh, I said high school. Even there is no middle school, it's first grade to the, yeah. the, the, the okay. grade. Yeah, yeah the so uh, he had something happened to his eye so he needed some surgery to get that uh, done and that surgery took four years four or years whatever so four reason. years surgery it's, uh, he's, uh, he was suffering pretty much uh, yeah. pretty much a long suffering yeah all right so everybody um so it's the second installment tomorrow but again this is a learning opportunity so drop your uh, wisdom here in the comment box see you next time bye